Hey, Hi, Jim. We speak to Mike Weiss. How yeah. are you? Very good. Doing all right. How are you good? doing? I'm very well, very well. A bit, uh, a bit cold today. I don't know what the weather's like. You're in Chicago, I take it. That's right. It's, uh, it's uh, weather like. It's drizzling. Yeah, same, same. It's not, it should be warmer, but it's not. That's the, that's the sure. best of it. Best of this. So, um, listen, welcome to the Afghan. Thank you very much for being here. Welcome to my golf kitchen. I didn't name it there that, it someone else did, but it went well. That's fine. Um, and welcome to Essex in, in the UK, just around the corner. I, th I think it's around the corner. I'm an hour away from London, but I am aware that everything's a long way away in America. That's right. Yeah, we never went to Essex, I don't think. No, uh, no, London a few no. times. But Do they have, um, you have shows there, or did they? No, no. That news, no, no. But um, we'll get onto your UK visits very shortly. Okay. So <laughs> let's just, let's just go. Um, let's go around the room. We'll start with you, Chris. So, um, how are you? Where are you? I think we've already discussed that. Um, I'm good. And what have you been up to today? Okay. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, we're in Chicago right now. We're in our rehearsal space, which is called Kildare Studios. Um, and uh, today, well, he actually got me out of work today. I was working and then I got to leave and come do this, which is really nice. But I do have to go back. Um, but it, this is this is very nice. Welcome. A welcome treat. Thank you very much. Ryan. How are you? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. I woke up, got some coffee, got some water, then walked here. Now I'm here. Of <laughs> course. And Joe? You know, I'm fine. Uh, things are things are pretty normal. Uh, I got up, rolled out of bed, got some coffee, got some water. Same. And drove here. Wonderful. <laughs> what is um Rhythm section, caffeine and water. Yes. You, are, you Did you have some kind of lockdown in Chicago with the pandemic going on? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it wasn't too severe. I mean, a lot of things were still open. A lot of people still had to work. A lot of people still had to work. Okay. But, but stuff like bars and stuff like that, did they all shut? Yeah. Yeah, so like no indoor dining or bars for a long time, and they're just starting to open up now. Yeah, the same. Like, yeah, same here actually. Yeah, we or we can you can drink outside at a pub now, um, which is everyone's just waiting for the weather to warm up a little bit because it's a bit fucking cold for that still. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, we haven't been able to do that since the end of November last year, so it's we're finally wow. getting there. Finally getting there, um, and it's wow. nice to hear you are too. Yeah, it's getting there. So um, my first question. Who will go throw this? I'm going to throw this one to Joe. Mm. Joe, describe the sound of meat wave for me. Oh, boy. Uh, driving. Pummeling. Somewhat thoughtful. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean. That's nice. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, the, it's kind of hard to. I mean, it's not something that I really think about too much. You know? like, That's why it's always my first question. Most people. No, it is what it is, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just the longer you didn't say the word post punk, which always makes me happy because that's the obvious yeah, one. Right. Everyone will, oh, we're a post punk band. And it's like, it's too easy. It's too easy. But, <laughs> thank you for that. Um, True, I want to yeah. take you right back to where it all started. I do believe if my research, not that I do much, I'm not gonna lie, serves me right, but this is the, this is your 10 year anniversary. Oh shit. That's right. Yeah, that's true. We were actually <laughs> not, we weren't positive about it, but you, I think you've just confirmed it. Yeah, I read, yeah, it all started in uh, 2011, 20 years, so 10 years. Yeah. So where's the big anniversary tour is my first <laughs> question. We're coming to Essex for the 10th. Well done, well done. <laughs> um 10 years fucking hell that's quite some time now well it, it's been a ride i take it oh, it definitely has yeah it's really wild yeah uh yeah we've been all over the place uh yeah this is the longest i've ever played in a band definitely so, i mean going back then going back 10 years ago where did you three meet 
I mean, we already kind of knew each other. Um, yeah, I knew Joe um, through being, we grew up in the same town kind of. And then I met Chris because a mutual friend of ours asked me to join uh, our band Truman and his trophy. So I met Chris through that. And then um, Chris knew Joe too, I'm sure. I knew Joe. I met Chris through recording Truman and his trophy, I think. that's mm, Or yeah. Bust, yeah. So were you all in Truman? Uh, not Joe. No. Ryan and I were, uh, but yeah, Joe recorded our band um, okay. at some point, a couple songs, and then he he would record a bunch of bands in the area. So that's how I kind of knew who he was. Um, and I'm from like the neighboring town from where they're from. They're a little older than me, but um, but yeah, he was. I knew he was around and recording and stuff. So when did the when did the conversation start about the end of Truman? and trying something new yeah this is kind of like chris and i want just want to do something different it was like a side kind of thing initially um and we both love joe's bass playing so we he was like one of the only people we thought to ask and he agreed so but do you remember that first rehearsal when the when the, the three of you got in the room for the first time together yeah i remember yeah it was right uh or no it yeah, no, yeah it was right next door it was right next oh, door wow. in the other room i thought it was in my garage mm -hmm. then we went to your garage oh. um but yeah i remember we played like two songs this song called too much and a song called no definition those were the two songs we had and those are on the first record um yep. so i think we just played those kind of over and over and that was basically it i feel like so where did the um where did the sound come from because i think meat wave have got a very distinctive sound and, it, and it's the sound that you've i know you've you've moved on and progressed and i think the incessant is quite a different album to um delusion moon but there's that you, it's still very much you that whole that sound you have that i mean uh ryan's ryan's very much a punk rock drummer that's how i think of him as well but very tribal head down bash 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 uh jokes thundering monotonous bass almost but just gets you there totally um, and that vocal style you have, Chris, which is very, I think, very unique. Oh, wow. That, that runs all the way through. That's all that for your entire career, that sound. Where did that sound come from? It, was it just something that happened in that room? Kind of kind of happened. I think there was some bands that we were talking about at the time. We liked a band called Detachment Kit, uh, which Ryan, I remember Ryan showed me that band, a band called Lace Javi Five. I mean, we liked the Stooges. Um, hot snake. There was kind of pinpoints, but yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly how. Um, also, I have to shout out our friends, the Broke Downs. They were huge. They're from uh, the area. Um, so it's yeah, I th think it's kind of pulling from all that. Um, and how different? To, how different did it sound to the previous band? Were you on vocal in the, in the last band? Chris. yeah it pretty pretty wildly different. I'd say. Yeah, the the previous band was like a really fun like kind of weird punky party sort of i don't know that's probably a bad description but <laughs> it was it was like goofy like, <laughs> like i feel like this band meat wave besides the name isn't super goofy and so it's kind of besides the name true yeah. trophy is like super goofy like um where so this is kind of like the opposite of that this was bit. like yeah kind of uh uh shifting to something more serious and something a little more intense you know okay um, why three? Why three piece? Ever a conversation about getting a, another guitarist in? We, yeah, I mean, maybe every couple of years we talk. About every it. couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, is when you add more people, I mean, then you gotta deal with another work schedule. In, I think I might just make everything a little bit more difficult, kind of. You know, I, of course. There's nothing more than a, than a listener, a lovely or band. I think that sound that you produce, the three of you, especially with just Chris's vocal on that one guitar, um, it records very well. There's not a massive amount. I don't think there's, a, I'm up, come, tell me if I'm wrong, but there's not a, a massive amount of guitar overdubs on that, on those, on those records. Hence the reason when you go and watch it live, it's, it sounds the same. It sounds exactly yeah, what yeah. you want it to. I think we consciously were, limiting uh, the amount of overdubs we were doing for that reason yeah in the next uh, couple of releases we kind of have 
uh, moved away from that a little bit and stopped caring so much about that. Uh, we'll see how that goes, but. Because <laughs> um, you're a very tuneful band, a very melodic band. There's a lot of, it's, it's more than just out and out bash punk rock, so to speak. <clears throat> There's a lot of melodies, again, going back to the incessant, because I've, without sucking your toes, it is one of the best albums I've ever heard. But it's, <laughs> but I mean, from start to finish, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, from start to finish, and it's very, very tuneful. It's very beautiful, the way I think it's been it's been put together, and it it completely flows like an album. Um, way Thanks. more than the previous album did. Is that, where does that come from? Is that, do you, I mean, are you the main songwriter? Who, how, how, what's the songwriting process like for your band? Yeah, I mean, it's mostly like I'll bring uh, for those records, at least like we said, we're kind of changing it up a bit. But now for those records, I would usually bring uh, a, a good idea of what the song was and then we would kind of work it out because I've got I well and we've come to uh, it's come to be that I know I kind of know what Ryan and Joe are going to do. It's like, okay. I, you know what I mean? So it's like it works really well in that way where it's like they there's an understanding uh between three of us um but all like mostly it's just the love for songs like and, and met like you're saying melody i'm just all about it so it's just yeah. all trying to make something that's interesting and uh, interests us you know and is, is is tuneful like you say um you remember the first key yeah how long right. after the first rehearsal was your first gig? Oh, of course. I think it was like a minute, right? It was in my 25th. Birthday. It was probably a month and a half after. Was it at a... At, at our friend Tim Knight's house. Yeah, yeah so I um, had been up. Uh, it was my 25th birthday. We played a Halloween show in our friend's basement. We did like five songs maybe. Uh, but I'd been up for 24 hours because I did, I got beat up by police in Chicago. <laughs> Um, for throwing a newspaper in the air and then I had to do community service for that so I was I had to work till like three in the morning do the community service at six and then we played the show that night um, that's why that, that's, that's like why a pretty you wild remember. it was like a pretty wild it was really fun we had a good time <laughs> um so this is the end of 20 this is the beginning of, this is the end of 2011 yes yeah it must be it was Halloween and yes. then uh 2012, February early 2012, you released your first e nine track EP, LP, whatever you want to call it, as self titled. Um, yes. Self funded? Just rehearsed yes. and all put together? I think it was supposed to be demos, more or less. It was supposed to be demos yeah. or, or on uh, splits or something, I guess. Right, right. Singles. Right. We were gonna do a bunch of splits, and then we, <laughs> and then we didn't do that, and we just thought, well, we'll just put it on Bandcamp uh, as like kind of like an album, you know. Um, okay. So it, it's definitely because yeah, we just wanted to get some shows at that point. Yeah, it's so. definitely not way thought out as much as it, it you know, the other ones maybe. Um, because the brother EP that which came out 2015, so that's three years later. There's there's the same songs are replicated. There's a few songs from that on the brother EP that was on the first album as well. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a wacky one. Yeah. <laughs> Why was that? Did you re-record those for that EP? Or they yeah. just went out as they stood? Kind of like our greatest hits. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we well, we put it on Bandcamp for free and then that's actually how we ended up meeting someone that got us to come to UK and play shows. Cause they heard okay. it like, you got to come out here and they kind of like got us to do that. Um, that brother EP. Right. And stuff. Yeah. They're the ones who kind of, I think the idea was just to get us out there a bit more, like more widely distributed, I guess. Yeah. So what, yeah, so that, for that, the three year period from 2012 to the, the uh, brother three years, it was just a case of getting out there playing where you could mainly yeah. mainly in America. Uh, mainly America, I think. In wasn't until two thousand early two thousand fifteen we went uh, to UK. It's probably yeah. Um, and then in that time, I think we did Delusion Moon, and that didn't yeah, come out until way until yeah. way later. Yeah, we did the, the Delusion Moon in. Twenty thirteen, like November twenty thirteen, I think. I think we we've, we've gone to UK in like twenty thirteen, right? 
Delusion Moon, it says 2015, released in 2015. You recorded right, it. Right, it was, yeah. You know, it took a while. Oh, man, time's crazy. It seems to be um, a thing. <laughs> that was the tour that you, that was the first time you come to the UK for the uh, the Moon tour. Uh, yeah, well, it was before no. Delusion Moon. It was January 2015, I think, was the first time. Right. And then we were out there, I don't know how many shows like we played. Like a week or Five something. or six shows, maybe. Yeah. Was that, uh, the, was that the tour with the Cassells? No. No, that no. was later. That was later. <clears throat> yeah, this was like just real quick. Like a little uh, teaser. Yeah. I think our first show was I'm at not... Sticky Mike's Frog Bar. Oh, yeah, yeah, Sticky, Sticky Mike's. Mike's Frog Bar. <laughs> Okay. Okay. In Brighton, I would say. In Brighton. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you don't mind me asking, how, how is that is that self funded? Is that a case of you guys saving up and just thinking we're going to go and do this? Yeah. That, that was yeah for sure. Uh, in fact, all of our European tours and all that. I mean, it's all out of our pockets. I, I mean, sometimes we break even. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But you have fun. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's a cheap best. vacation, you know. Yeah. People's couches, people's sofas, people yep. buy drinks, play some shows. Yeah, that's great. I mean, it's the best. cannot wait to go back. Yeah. Absolutely. No, absolutely. Yeah, we can't wait either. Um. So the when was the Cassell tour? Was that 2015? I think that was after the incessant. Wasn't it? No, that might have been 2017. 2017. 2017. Maybe. Yeah, because I remember we uh, were like, you had to do some like inter when we were on Leeds. You did an interview about the incessant because it had like kind of just come out. Yeah, I think that or was around did. that time with the Cassells. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, there was what two years between the between Moon and the incessant. Yeah. What was the the writing process? Did the writing process change? I only ask because I think it's a it's a it's quite a very different album to the previous album. Um, it, like I said, it, it, it sounds like the incessant for me sounds like an album. It sounds from start to finish, track by track. It flows fabulously well, um, and it just it's it, not what better put together is probably the wrong wrong turn of phrase. But Delusion Moon is is a bunch of fucking great rock and roll songs, whereas mm -hmm. Incessant sounds like a, a full like a full project almost. If that sure, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think like, hearing, like thematically and like the lyrics, it's pretty like. A lot of it's right like yeah i don't think the process changed that much though i think we practiced a lot more and like well the incessant we had a lot less time to prepare actually uh 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 because tom uh who is our manager <clears throat> booked uh, the recording and was just like these are your dates <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be you're gonna have something to record right we worked really yeah we were so we were, we were practicing yeah like, i mean we were practicing days. multiple days a week to get that together I mean, probably good on him yeah it, it sounds it's i mean you i've seen you i've been lucky i've seen you live twice but it, it, the album sounds tight as fuck totally but no, i always yeah. it was always seeing you seeing you guys live on stage anyway it's, it was never any different at all which was beautiful so as as the the that's always been important to you. I think as a free piece, is that you, it sounds like you've rehearsed a lot and worked on that hard. Yeah, I yeah. mean for sure. Yeah, we like record. We recorded that album ourselves before we even went in twice. Oh yeah, yeah. We recorded it twice before we actually recorded it. <laughs> yeah, because we only had four days to record that album. So wow, like we had to like in two days. Make of Sure, two that's days of recording two days of mixing, right? Or something like right. That. We had to make sure that all the details were completely ironed out when we stepped in the front door of that studio. Like we had to have our shit together. So recorded live, the three of you playing together. Yeah, I mean there's some overdubs, but yeah. Yeah. For the most part, it's recorded live. Like I said, it's a wonderful album. And it, it's this, it's one that's going to stay with me for an awful long time. Um, Thank you, Brian. It was it um, was it a joy to tour. I'm sorry. Was it good? Was it a nice album to tour to perform oh, yeah. live? I think that was our best tour or, or some of our best touring. Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. It was and a fucking blast. It was like the last time, <laughs> the last couple of times we were over uh, in Europe and UK. That it just got better and better. I feel like. 
Yeah, I mean, things haven't been getting worse. You know what I mean? Right, right. <laughs> like, we've still managed to, to, to... Every tour has been a little bit better each time. Yeah. So... Yeah, and it's like a major slow climb for us, yeah. which is nice. It's really, it's nice. Yeah, it's all great. Yeah. It was, um, I saw you, my first time I saw you was at Lexington. I think that's why I approached slightly hey, drunk. Yeah, I, I remember talking park. to you. Oh, yeah. is that that... Uh, From London? The Lexington. Oh, Lexington. Yeah. right, right, right. right. Okay. Yeah, and then the, I think the next time I saw you was, I didn't expect you to come back so soon. You came back for a, a festival on the Saturday. Um Yeah. And then you played that you played that free show at the Shackwell Arms right night before in that yeah, weird that was event. crazy yeah that looks like a we had flown like in that. yeah we like stepped right off the plane <laughs> and then played that show yeah. so that was wild yeah that was a good time it was, was a great show great but it was show. fun uh, and then so and that was the last time what other where else in Europe have you played we've done a lot of France and a lot of Germany um, I feel like Netherlands we usually hit yeah like. Scandinavia, yeah. Um, yeah, the last the last tour we did out there was really fun because we were playing some places we hadn't been before. And, like people were showing up, like it was really fucking cool. Yeah, like, I, like we didn't know, you know, like you just never know. And um, went Rotterdam. That was like one of the craziest. Oh ones. yeah, we played a boat in Rotterdam. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a shame because it's been so long now. Um, but of course, uh, is, it tough, is it hard because not knowing when you book these shows in Europe, especially if anyone's going to turn up, what, what sort of feedback do you get beforehand? It's just a case of let's hope we can sell some tickets. Is that the way it works? Uh, kind of. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, like There's not much we can do to control it. You know, I mean, our label out there is really great. Yeah. Uh, Big Scary Monsters. I think yep. they did a really good job. That um, made a huge difference, actually. Yeah. And, um, I mean, we got uh, some, like, proper-ass press people that work for us out there, and, like, that's really that's really helpful. And yeah, like, I mean, it, I mean, I, 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 mean I, came, I came on board 2017, I think. I think the assessment was just about to arrive because Joe Talbot, the leasing of idols, he had a, a radio show on Radio 6. He, he, he stood in one just one show for one evening, and he played his... his favorite 10 tracks of that time and he played no light and that was the first time i'd ever heard that track and it was like what the, that's fucking amazing and that was oh, obviously wow. the album the album arrived very soon afterwards um that's great that's cool 20 so that's 2018 is the year after that and it's kind of all gone you released uh this, this double a side single shame and the dogs at night about six about six five six months after the incessant i think yeah, those are from those sessions. Um, they were B sides. Yeah, those records. were just stuff that didn't make it onto the album. That's two great tracks, but I, I totally agree. I th I, Dogs at Night, particularly, is a favorite of mine. Um, cool. Can't, can't for the life of me think where it'd fit on the album, though. Right. Yeah, yeah I think I think we already <laughs> knew going in, but for some reason we recorded them. I don't know why. But yeah, I think we already knew I mean, that they weren't going to be. I mean, be because on. why not? Well, yeah, sure. I guess. So yeah. And I then mean, those are my Go favorite. On, sorry. Yeah, that that yeah, that great track. I think the same the same year as well. You really cut two months after you had the split single with Lifestyles, with uh, that's all white on it, which again is another another top tune. Uh, and one I do I do want to hear that live one day. So next time we come to London, stick yeah, on the set. It's the, we play that one pretty regularly. I love playing that one. Yeah, it's a yeah, great it's a great tune. Yeah. Um, 2019, early 2020, pandemic hits. I think I remember reading about you guys talking about coming back to the UK in 2019 and obviously and touring, um, et cetera. But obviously the world shut down because the fucking virus turned up and ruined it all for everyone, basically. So no one's been to, I, it's been for me, it's been 14 months since my last gig, which is just, just horrible. When was the last time you played together? January, 2020. This year. 20, I'm not 21 now, aren't we? So that's oh, yeah. like fucking hell. So January 2020 last was our, show was our January last show. 2020. Yeah. Uh, we did this three-day fest in Chicago called Ian's Party. And so we played that January 2020. And then by March here, everything was uh, complex. <laughs> yeah. 
I think the the la- we saw Proto Martyr like the night before everything shut down, uh-huh. and that was like a pretty good like last show before. Yeah, that's a good one. I mean, it was it, they were amazing. It was really fun. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, was there any times over the when you, when it, everything shut down and went to lockdown? There was we and in the UK we you couldn't even go and visit a friend or go and see your parents and stuff like that. We were literally just housebound. Was there a, a, a certain amount of time for you guys where you couldn't even get together and rehearse? We stopped. Yeah, we took probably I don't know three or three or four months off. Yeah. Then we started doing like mass, like practicing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. I mean, it's not like we were like hanging out with a ton of people. Right. Yeah. I mean, so we were our own little core. Yeah. Like group kind of. I just need a little bit of joy in my life. Just a little bit. <laughs> oh, fuck it. Yeah, we absolutely. Um, in December of 2020, I think you dropped your first new track for probably two, three years from the from after the incessant stuff, which was um, Yell at the Moon. If someone asks me, what do Meat Waves sound like? That's the song I'm always going to play on. Because I think it's it's the pinnacle of your sound. Wow. Cool. I think, you know, it, it, you, all three of you, what you do, your craft on that song is just p- perfection, totally. And then wow, you completely you. nailed it. So for me, it was a, to hear that for the first time, new stuff since the assessment or around that time was just blew my little mind totally. So thank you very much for that release. Wow, very cool. <laughs> and it that. really arrived at a good time. It's a great track. Um, thank you. Are we allowed to talk about what's coming? You haven't announced yeah, it yeah. yet. Yeah, yeah. So, um, June? June, yeah. We got EP in June uh, called Volcano Park, um, which we just recently kind of did. It's pretty fresh. Um, and it was kind of written and recorded really quickly. Um, I mean, well, if there wasn't for COVID, it wouldn't have uh, probably happened, right? I yeah. Because like, we just wanted to use the time more valuably than just kind of sitting around and playing our songs, you know, kind of trying to make something new and something like more, a little quick. Uh, but yeah, that's what came out. So yeah, we're, we're really excited about it. And I think it's, we are doing every aspect of the, the EP ourselves. Yeah, that's right. Except for marketing and distribution in, in Europe <laughs> and the UK. But yeah, Big Scary Monster. Should they're, be noticed. Open us out, but, um, or it should be noted, but yeah. Um, we six track North eight, America, we wanted it all ourselves, and uh, we're selling it ourselves. We're shipping it ourselves. Good. Uh, Chris did the art. I did the art. So yeah, it's just yeah. a special little release. Before I mean, we have an album also that'll come out. We don't know when right now, but um, I was going to say because I was surprised. Well, I'm not surprised. I'm over the moon, but it, it's a six track EP, and I think it was for some reason he was kind of expecting uh, the next full Meatwave album. Yeah, so I, I was think quite a lot surprised. Of I think yeah, a lot of people are that? expecting it, but <laughs> um, it exists. It's coming. Yeah, it's, it's coming. It's there. Um, so it, yeah, we actually did this EP <laughs> after the record, and it's coming out before it. Um, so the album's recorded. It's yeah. been oh, yeah. it's been done for, for quite a long, a long time. time. Oh, um, wow. We're just waiting. Like, well, the COVID, you know, really fucked it up. <laughs> right. That's that's the that's the fucking biggest tease I've had for months. Then. <laughs> It's coming. It's coming. I can't yeah, say we like had it. some plans t- to start getting that out right before the coronavirus thing hit. And uh, we didn't want to like to put it out while this was going on. It just we're like a tour. We're, I mean, like, like what? <laughs> we're like a touring band, so I feel like we yeah. have to give the tour for putting a record out. Do you know? It's been a lot of talking. I've done quite a lot of these over. over I mean, they started at the beginning of the pandemic because you couldn't go out. So I just bring the bands into your kitchen and have a chat with them and stuff. And I think a lot of there's it's probably as half and half split as the guys, people that are sitting on albums thinking I don't want to release it because what we do, we go and play live, and that's our audience, and that's our craft, and that's how we're going to promote it. And other bands have. The, it's quite strange. The bands that did release albums during the pandemic have then gone on to write another album. Yeah. So that's sitting on. I mean, Idol's a great example. They've they've released album four, um, album three. Sorry, they haven't never they haven't toured album three. Yeah. But album four is already done, written, recorded. Hmm. They've got to tour the world yet with album three before album four even can hit. It'll be two yeah. years old before the time they do it. 
Yeah. It's been a were they tough decisions then? Because what what was the trying to thought about recording another six track EP and releasing that prior to releasing the full album? I mean, we haven't released anything since 2017, yeah. practically. Practically. Yeah. I mean, practically. And an EP is pretty low stakes, you know. And, and we, we were writing songs anyway, so it was kind of like we have new stuff to record. Let's uh, let's just do it. And uh, it's kind of the consolation yeah. uh, for not having right. a record yet. Right, know? it's the consolation <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'm lucky enough. Chris sent me a copy um, on a, a couple of weeks ago, um, and I have listened to it quite a lot actually it's um it's a it's a lovely sound and it's um uh, you should be very proud of it it's a great it's a lovely ep but it's um thanks again it's it's very you there's a certain there's a track there's a track on it called truth died it's a beautiful it's probably the slow i think the slowest song you've ever written or, or ever bought out it's fucking it's well done thank you it's slow and it's the first major key song i think we've ever done is that true i feel like it, it, no. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, I wrote that on Adderall, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really weird. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. It's a great. It's a, it's it just sounds beautiful. It's a really lovely. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you. So well done. So well, we got a, we got a date in June for that. Do we know what date? It's in June. June eleventh. Okay. June eleventh. Yeah. L lots of vinyl versions and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. There'll be a couple. Yep. Uh, a couple different versions of vinyl yet yeah, available. More t-shirts. Some t-shirts. Yeah, the, it's looking like the vinyl will probably be shipping in August, but uh, <laughs> yeah. um, so it will soon, exist. Yeah. Why? Why we mentioned t-shirts? Um, again, I asked. I, I spoke to Joe from Idols a lot, and I asked him what he's as Idols as a band have released 120 odd t-shirts in the last three years which is a fucking lot of t-shirts for any band <laughs> i asked him what his favorite t-shirt was band t-shirt ever and his answer was your et t-shirt that's where, a popular where, one yeah, that is a popular a, one where whose picture is that is that where did the where did the inspiration for that t-shirt come from it was just ryan dugan who designed it i think was that his idea yeah that was a ryan dugan phenomenal uh, artist in chicago yeah he's he, uh, he's amazing um yeah check him out ryan dugan okay yeah yeah he's it's such a great image it's the t-shirt i can wear that where you i will get the most reaction from people. what the what the fuck is that it's That's just a awesome. very skinny et <laughs> yeah we cannot take any credit okay. for it whatsoever <laughs> yeah. uh we're just lucky yeah that he he bestowed it upon us um ryan before we move on to the quick fire i want to thank you for your uh your Instagram dancing videos that appeared during <laughs> <laughs> Those are fun. <laughs> but very, very funny, mate. I mean, very entertaining. I've known for a long time, but... You were so serious in them as well. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I'm going to drop some more soon. Don't worry. Yeah, 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 yeah do I'm that. Going, yeah, please. I'm going to LA, so I'm going to be doing some weird <laughs> shit on Instagram. Mark Ryan, Robert. while we're talking about you, did I, did I dream it, or did I see that you've got an avatar? I do. Well yeah. done. Yeah, yeah well I done. love Abba. <laughs> we I, might come I, had a, I had a day off and I um, had a little bit of extra money and I walked past a tattoo shop and had been thinking about getting this tattoo. And then I like turned around and walked in. I was like, can I get an Abba tattoo? And the guy's like, y'all don't have to be booked. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? On your arm? Yeah, it's on my uh, the back of my arm. Listen, guys, been, I want to take you for a quick fire. Thank you very much for talking about Meatwave for me for the last 40 minutes. Thank yeah. you so much. It's been, a, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you here. Um, Thank someone you. I've wanted to, to, I wanted to get you in for ages, but I just needed to know the right time. So obviously when the EP was announced, it was like perfect timing. So thank, thank you. you very much. Thank um, you. I'm going to take you for my quick fire round because everyone has to go through it. Um, you've got literally 10, 15 questions each. The whole idea. We'll, we'll go one. We'll go to. We'll take it in turns. Uh, Chris, I think you're first. Okay. The other whole idea is you need to just top of your head. Okay. First, first one that comes into your head. Chris, what's your favourite Meatwave track? Uh, uh, Yell to Moon. Ryan. Favourite no, Meatwave track. I'm sorry. Take it. That's all right. 
Nice. Uh, Joe, favourite Meatwave track? Sham King. Ooh. Chris, cats or dogs? Uh, uh, cats. Ryan, cats. what's the best album ever made? <laughs> oh, Top of your head. Best First album ever of. made? Quick fire. God damn it. Quick. <laughs> Raw power. I studios. knew you were going to say that. Yeah. It's a good answer. Um, Joe, favourite smell? Uh, lavender. What? <laughs> that's my that's a favorite. fucking lie. You're out of the band, motherfucker. <laughs> um, Chris, no, that's, 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 that's bullshit. Chris, your dream support slot. If you could support anyone at all, living or or long gone, who would it have been? Uh, ATDC. Nice. It would be a good yeah. I, I'd take that. Um, Ryan, the best band ever. The Stooges. <laughs> Who? The Stooges. I was, I, I was waiting for ABBA. It never happened. Oh. I mean, okay. Yeah, yeah, you don't have a Stooges tattoo. I would say you? ABBA. Yeah, ABBA. I guess I think of them as like a pop group. And like, I was thinking more of like fans, you know? Okay. But ABBA, yeah, they are. <laughs> Joe, what's the, Joe, what's the top of your bucket list? Um, Paramotoring. That's like the. Oh, you've shown us those videos. Yeah, that's just video. yeah. yeah, that's cool. Chris, um, favorite TV show ever? Um, uh, Sopranos. Oh, oh nice. Wonderful. Nice answer. Um, Ryan, favorite city? Favorite city? Ooh, quick fire. Come on. Chicago. Oh. Hey, home. Uh, Joe, your best toy as a kid? I'm trying to think. Okay, what did I have? Uh, my computer. Oh. Okay. Which one? We had a computer. Which one was it? It was a Packard Bell 486. Uh, not a very good machine, but it worked. But it worked. Um, Chris, your favorite. I play smell. Uh, Commander Keen on it. Sorry. <laughs> your favorite smell. Favorite smell. Uh, Red Hot Ranch, which is a. Hot dog uh, burger place here in Chicago. Okay. My favorite smell. Um, Ryan, what's the strangest thing you've ever eaten? Raw chicken. Oh, fucking hell. Understand? I was in Japan and they had like fancy raw chicken and I ate it and it was pretty good. Doesn't matter, <clears> I thought that killed you. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have done it anywhere else. It seemed like they knew what they were doing. <laughs> um, Joe, your favorite city? Chicago. He's nice. Sorry. He's nice. Uh, Chris, the <laughs> best album ever made. You knew that you knew that question was coming. Oh, I'm so bad at this. I'm gonna say uh oh fuck. Raw power. <laughs> <laughs> uh Ryan, cats Fun or dogs? House. <laughs> what was that? Right, cats or dogs? Cats for sure. Dogs. Joe. Are Best ever. Joe, your favorite film? Ah, uh, Freddie Got Fingered. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Chris, best band ever? Um, ACDC. Nice. Ryan, your dream support slot. What was the last one? Your dream support slot. Ooh. Um... I feel like we've already done it twice. Mm. So I was going to say, I would say Hot Snakes, we've done it. Proto Martyr, we've done it. Um, <laughs> Dream Support. Fuck, dude. I don't know. That works, right? This is quick. Oh, oh, I got it. I got it. I'm sorry. Go on. Cheryl Crow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we can open up for Cheryl Crow. That would be pretty well. That would be sick. Um, Joe, what's yeah. Ryan's worst habit? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, um, he, That's my favorite question. he loves like really stinky food. <laughs> and he eats it in the van. <laughs> oh, he eats like raw fish in the van. I stopped doing it. Well, I used to, 
I, we were at a motel, I think, one time, and I, I, had, I was eating sardines, and it really bummed everybody Fuck. out. It was brought to my attention that that was a bummer, so I, I stopped doing that. Um, I, I, yeah, like, to his credit, he has stopped doing it. I try to be more polite. <laughs> uh, Chris, your superpower, what would it be? Superpower? Uh, fly. Just to fly. <laughs> See, I, reckon that's cold. I reckon that's cold up there. Yeah, well, I can take it. Okay, well done. Uh, Ryan, Wait. favorite TV show? I have to say Twin Peaks. Oh, I should have said Twin Peaks. Twin, it, well, it, it's surprising how Twin Peaks, they're up there together, aren't they? Without a doubt. Can I change an answer? <laughs> Go on. Support slot. If we could support Charlie XCX, I don't think most people would be into us, but I would get to see her perform every night on tour, so that would be good for me. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, J- Joe, what's the strangest thing you've ever written? I mean, I'm not very adventurous. I don't know. Uh, probably, uh, probably like all the curry that I've eaten on tour <laughs> in Europe. So you're on curry, Ryan's on fish. It's, it's yeah. not a great place to be, is it? I mean, I, to, I'm not adventurous, man. Okay. As far as that, I've eaten, I've eaten bugs too, but I think raw raw chicken's a little weirder. Crickets, I've had those are good. Um, you, Chris, so I would never do that. Sorry? Top of, your, top of your bucket list. Um, I'm going to, uh, I want to go to like Spain and Brazil. Okay. <laughs> nice. Uh, Ryan, favorite smell? Favorite smell would be currently um, fermented fish. I'm just kidding. Uh, I, I like the smell of burning Can't cedar you? a lot. I love the smell of burning cedar. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Joe, uh, your dream sports slot? Oh, uh, <laughs> let's do a... Uh, can it be a band that, that yeah. no longer exists? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay, well, in that case, let's... Uh, I don't know. Big fire. Man. Let's do Black Sabbath. Why not, right? Why not? Why not? Always yeah. a good answer. Chris, the strangest thing you've ever eaten? Um, I've had a uh, uh, fried alligator. Oh yeah, really? At a, at like a rib fest. <laughs> <laughs> they had alligator tacos in uh, Florida too. Oh yeah, 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 pretty good. It tastes like chicken. Yeah, everything tastes like chicken. Yeah. Eventually. <laughs> um, Ryan, top of your bucket list. I want to eat oysters again before I die, which eat. I will be doing in two days. So my life will be complete. Okay. Uh, Joe, Joe, cats or dogs? Uh, cats. I like both, though. Uh, Chris, favorite city? Chicago, Illinois. That's a lovely set of three. Well done. Well done. It's <laughs> nice. Uh, Ryan, your favorite toy as a kid? Okay, so I got a Super Nintendo, hey. and that fucking rule I didn't even know existed, and uh, it showed up. And I was obsessed with it and it fucking rolled. Joe, the best album ever made is, was. I'm going to go with Nirvana. Oh, which In one? utero. Yeah, well done. Uh, Chris, favorite toys of kids? Um, uh, Power Ranger uh, figurines. Ooh, okay. Ryan, superpower? I guess flying would be pretty dope. I, I, I that not that wasn't gonna be what I would have thought of, but Joe, best you band ever, it. best band ever, the best band ever. Uh, yeah. Let's do. Uh, uh, yes. Ooh, nice, nice. Uh, Chris, favorite film. Um, there will be blood. Ryan, give Chris's you worst habit. habit. Oh, my, my oh. worst. Who's worst habit? Chris, yeah, Ryan. Chris's worst habit. Uh, what is your worst? Give habit? it to me straight, bro. No, I am, but um, <laughs> the long list. Sometimes, uh, playing, playing sad music at a party. 
<laughs> I feel like we were hanging out one time when Frank Ocean was playing a lot, and I was like, oh, man, I love this music, but... That's a great one. But I'm... Ooh, we're up high. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, Joe, your favorite TV show? Okay, my favorite TV show. I'm going to go with... Uh, let's do... Uh, Two Stranger Things. Let's do Kenny versus Spenny. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. Check that out. It's a okay. uh, Canadian a TV show where uh, two friends uh, compete, and okay. the competitions are ridiculous. Uh, Chris, Joe's worst habit. This could be it. <laughs> it could this be the end. end. <laughs> His penchant for your mom jokes. <laughs> what? <laughs> Your insistence on no, I don't know. No, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? Your insistence on doing your mom jokes. It was that's good. It's a good joke. No, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> I've moved on. You were carrying the torch. I don't. No, oh, I don't. Fair I, enough. I don't Ryan, know. Oh, Ryan, Ryan, you fight the film. <laughs> okay. Ryan, favorite film? My favorite film, I'm going to give you two. Cool. <laughs> Currently, Midsummer and Wet Hot American Summer. Oh, two summers. Yeah. Uh, Joe, Superpower? Invincibility. Way better. <laughs> <laughs> Your last questions, guys. Chris, describe yourself in three words. Describe myself in three words. Yeah. Um, um, nice. Oh. Um, 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 uh, oh my God. <laughs> um, hardworking. <laughs> Handsome. Ryan, same question. Describe yourself in three words. Uh, pleasure seeker. Um, hungry. Yeah. That's pleasure seeker. So that's still on that category. Mm -hmm. That's three words. Uh, <laughs> pleasure seeker, uh, empathetic, and... Um, Fun. Ray, Joe, same question. Three words, and I'll leave you alone. Um, warrior. <laughs> uh, problem solver. Um. I'd like to say I'm somewhat competent most of the time. I'd say that. That's <laughs> um, I don't know. Chris, Joe, Ryan, thank you very much. Hey, thank Thanks. you. Thank you, very much for your time. Up, thank you very much for your time. I, I, um, like I said, I love you, Pete, and I'll be telling everyone else to listen to it and buy it as well when it arrives in June. That's right. I can't wait for you to come and see our shores and um, play some we'll good damn rock and roll for us again it's very soon. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. It's been yeah, pleasure. it's been Thank fun. You. Thanks. Thank you very much. I'll let you get on with your day. All the best. Take care. Yeah. Have the best Bye -bye. ever. Bye-bye. I'm gone.